changing president is extra easy when you just make some noise. Yes, hello and welcome to More Nerdy Rodent Geekery, where today I'm exploring the power of this awesome node called Unsampler, which is from the Comfy UI Noise Custom Node Pack. If you tried the old image to image alternative test in Automatic 11.11, it allows for pretty similar changes. While I didn't have much luck using that old image to image test myself, Unsampler certainly seems to do the job in Comfy UI. Just as with the examples they provide for Automatic 11.11 there, you can make changes such as hair colour or expression and even more things too. Let's start off right at the very beginning with a workflow similar to the example one from the nodes web page. The test here is to ensure that we get the same image out as we put in because then it means we're making the right sort of noise. All I've done here to start with is tidy up that example workflow a little bit. Well, there are some extra nodes underneath which I've got bypassed at the moment, but I'll explain why those are needed soon. Here we've got the flower girl going in and that's going through the unsampler along with a little bit of a prompt and we can see there we've got the noise. That noise is then going into your normal K sampler as the latent image and we get a pretty good representation of the original image out. In some ways, it's a little bit like when you use the VAE for image to image, but as it's noise, we now get some control as we can use the prompts as well. Another pretty cool thing is the output resolution. If I open this image up in a new tab, we can see there it's 1136 by 1440, which is far above what Stable Diffusion 1.5 would typically handle without a high res fix. As you can see, the output is almost identical. We've got some fairly decent looking hands there. The flowers look nice, although there is a little bit of writing on the handle there that hasn't come out properly. If I zoom in here on the original, you might be able to see it there. CC Ingham, whereas on this one, it's just a little bit more blurry. Let's try and zoom in. Yeah, you can't really read that, can you? So there are some finer details which are lost, but otherwise it's a pretty similar image. I've got a new image here, which I'm scaling down for speed. And like the examples from the image to image alternative test, let's try making some changes. All right, we'll zoom out there. So we can see, first of all, we've got the woman, she's turned into noise, and we've got the exact same image out as far as it can be. But what happens if I change this checkpoint up here from the standard pruned EMA only Stable Diffusion 1.5 to something like, oh, I don't know, let's pick Epic Realism. Oh, what's happened there? All I did was change the model and now the image doesn't look like the input at all. Well, no worries, because that's why the control nets are there. I've got those selected, so let's unbypass them and run it through again. This time you can see the output is definitely much more like the original, although it is now quite bright. On the plus side, of course, it isn't quite as bad as it was before. Okay, so now for those output control prompts. What is it that we want to change about that image? I don't know. How about let's give her um, blonde hair and a red hat and we'll try something in the negative prompt as well to see if we can do something about that brightness. If we run it through with that new prompt, then hopefully we should get, yes, there we go. She's got a red hat and blonde hair. That's absolutely excellent. I think it sort of feels a little bit like instruct picks to picks there in a way. Now, another thing you can do is increase that guidance scale. If we pop that up to something more like two, then it should follow those prompts even more. There it is, very red hat, very blonde hair, and I think that's a pretty decent output. Now, as you may be aware, the higher you raise that guidance scale, the more 
like your prompt it will be and so the more this image will change let's give a little example here let's put that all the way up to six and then we can see how the image changes then okay quite a lot we've got a very red hat and lots and lots of red there very blonde hair so the more you increase that guidance scale the more like your prompt it will be in the example from the beginning i've got the output control prompt there as morgan freeman so i'm turning that old picture into a picture of morgan freeman I've got a quite a low weight on the depth and it's a fairly high one on the line art control net there and as you can see it's got the face there and the stars but even though that control net is quite high thanks to the high guidance scale there of 2.5 it's still come out as a very decent picture of Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman 2024. Okay, so initializing the latent noise in this way looks to be fun, but what else can you do with it? Well, one thing I've been having fun with is turning paintings into photos and people into rodents, all sorts of things like that. For example, we've got a classic artwork here I've got a very simple prompt which actually matches the original blonde hair and blue eyes but because I'm using that epic realism model when the image comes out we get this which I think is quite nice so there we've got a more photorealistic version of that painting for another classic artwork I've used the prompt photorealism here with a guidance scale of 4.5, which is pretty high for this sort of thing. And I think it's turned out quite nicely. So she's got like the original hair, but it's turned that into a photorealistic person. Nice and weird, the sort of thing that I love. And how about for this beautiful lady here with such a stunning smile? Well, in the output control there, I've got a rodent and there she is. She has become rodentized, much more normal, don't you think? This node looks to be both powerful and fun as it gives you a little bit more control over the noise that you're putting into your case sampler. So then you can be slightly creative with your prompts and yet still have something quite similar to the input image. Maybe this could somehow be used with animations or masks so many more things that i need to try do let me know down in the comments if you discover even more exciting ways to use this node as i'm sure it can be used in some really creative ways plus if you're looking for even more comfy ui inspiration then why not check out this next video